Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a treat for you. Now, Big Tree Tech recently reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in taking a look at the new Panda Touch. I took a look at the website, saw what they had to offer, and I said, yeah, absolutely. I'd be interested in seeing um, what this can do for, you know, uh, bamboo uh, 3D printer owners. And at the time, I only had the A1, but since then, as many of you know, I got the P1S. So we're going to take a look at this uh, unit. We're going to do an unboxing. I will go over some of the key features of this, things I like, things I don't like. Uh, we'll go through the setup, the installation. And then finally, I'll uh, give you an idea of, uh, you know, some of the pros and cons and what I like or dislike about this uh, unit. So let's get into it. Okay, first thing, let's crack into this box. I have not even opened this yet, so this is kind of, I guess you get to join me on my, my very first experience on seeing what we have here. So, looks like we got a little Big Tree Tech sticker. We have our uh, manual and a little thank you card with some information. And then here we have the actual unit. So we've got our lovely little velvety plastic right here. And there is the display. And I believe, yeah, we've got the magnetic uh, mounting. And we'll cover some of this, uh, the, the ins and outs of this as we go through this little review. And then finally, Back over here to the box, we've got a little accessory and I would expect there to be the mount and a charging cable here and looks like there is, well, look at that. That is a very cute little rubber duck. So hopefully I didn't ruin that surprise for anybody, but maybe I just did. All right, so we have here a USB-C uh, cable. We have an Allen wrench, and then we have a very sturdy, I think that might be aluminum. Um, so that's going to mount on the top of the, uh, the P1S, which, as you all know, um, I have now. So I will be able to put that uh, on there. So. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to power this thing on and pair it with my two printers to see how that works. So, stand by. Now before I power this on, I did want to go over a couple things here. So you do get this uh, little quick start guide and it's mostly um, installation instructions and uh, connections. But if you go to the uh, wiki, which the URL is right here and I'll put that in the uh, description of the video uh, bttwiki.com slash pandatouch.html you'll see there is all this information here um, it tells you uh, what's going on with the firmware and one of the first things that we need to, to touch on because I know I'll probably get a thousand comments about this but it says, it is possible that Bamboo Labs may release a future fir firmware version which impacts the functions available from the Panda Touch. Big Tree Tech will monitor all beta firmware versions, and if we find a firmware version that affects Panda Touch functionality, we will send out alert via email, AliExpress chat, and our social channels. Buyers can then decide whether or not they would like to perform the update at the risk of losing functionality. Note that the P Panda Touch warranty does not cover the lost functionality due to a Bamboo, Bamboo Lab firmware update from being be performed. So let's just get that out of the way. Um, you know, they're using uh, some connections and technology that could change over time. So that's just the nature of, of buying uh, an accessory to any, any kind of uh, device. But anyway, we'll go through, it's got again, the installation instructions, but then it goes through the uh, Wi-Fi connection guide. So this is what I'm going to be utilizing as we jump into our first connection. All right, let's get this thing set up. Now we're going to start on the back. Obviously, we got a power switch back here. Now the power switch is labeled off, and then you have the battery icon, and then you have DC 5 volts. Now, according to the wiki, um, 
they recommend that you switch to DC 5 volts if you turn your printer on and off often. Uh, because when you turn the printer off and if you have it set to the battery icon, this will switch over to battery mode, but that battery is going to die after 30 minutes, so you're going to have that lithium ion battery getting depleted. Then when you turn your um, printer back on, it's going to charge back up. When you turn it off, it's going to die again. So you're going to go through a lot of battery cycle iterations that are unnecessary. So you should probably run this on DC 5 volts if you're, if you're plugging it in uh, with the included USB cable, and then just switch over to battery when you need to. So I'm going to put it on. DC 5 volts, and then I've just got a little battery back, a little battery bank connected to the plate here. I'm going to click that on and turn on the bank. And now we should get our screen. So let's continue with the setup. Now, as we can see, we have, uh, it's kind of cycling through languages here, but it says please connect to the internet by selecting the Wi-Fi network on the right and then entering the password. And you've also got a little QR code there. You can uh, scan that with your phone and bring up the uh, online manual. So it's picking up my access point here. Uh, oddly, it's showing two of them. Now I have an Orbi system and there's actually three access points around the house. Um, but let me enter that information without giving away all my passwords. So one moment, please. Okay, and we're back. Now, maybe it's something they can handle in a firmware update at some point, but you can see um, it looks like my Wi-Fi signal is really weak, but I'm literally about 25 feet away from the main access point, so it should be nice and strong. So we're going to hit next. And then we now get to add our printer. So I'm going to hit scan. And I have both the P1S and the A1 currently on. So hopefully it will find those two printers. I wish I had some, some music, like Jeopardy music. OK. So there we have our two printers that it found. Now, I will say this is a little bit of a confusing screen because it shows the two printers, shows all the information there, um, but my only two choices here are cancel and refresh. If I hit cancel, it's going to drop those two printers. If I refresh, it's going to scan again for another 30 seconds and find them. What you actually have to do is tap on that, and then it says please confirm that you want to add this printer connection to the Panda Touch. I will hit confirm. Now I need some information. I have to answer, or I have to go find the access code for each uh, device. So let me uh, go do that now, and I will step you through each printer. Now on the A1, which is the only other bamboo printer I have, it's in a different location. So you're going to come down here to setting, then you're going to go down two screens to LAN only mode. Hit LAN only mode, and here we will see the access code. That is the information that you will add to the Panda Touch. Once we have the access code, we'll enter that. We'll go ahead and hit the OK button, and then I have this choice down here at the bottom to confirm. Now that I've hit confirm, you can see at the top there, it says that it's successfully connected to that printer. Now if I come back here to the settings, I have a number of uh, items here that I can adjust. Actually, I can scroll down here. So um, you can see the model. It's got the fill or the uh, picture there associated with that. I can set a filament color. I can set a filament material. Now these are limited to, I believe, about six characters. I currently have a zero. Hit the little icons. Zero point four. Go back nozzle. So I can put that in there. Uh, nozzle material. Again, I'm limited to six characters. So let's just go, we'll just put SS for stainless steel because it's not hardened. And I'll hit confirm and back. Now, one thing you'll also notice is the control mode. Now, one device, if you only have one, you might as well set it to master. If I, you have two, like I do, one has to be master, and then you have options for the say, second one, and I'll discuss those settings later. 
Now let's get that second printer added. I'm going to go ahead, I've come down here uh, to this icon, I'm going to hit the plus, and if I hit scan, it's already found uh, that second one from our first scan. You can see this one says already added, so if I just tap on this one, it'll ask me again if I want to confirm that I want to add that printer, and again, I need the access code. So now let me go show you how to find the access code on the P1S. Now, where are we going to get the access code? For the P1S, all you have to do is come down to this icon here for your settings. We're going to move over. We're going to come to Wireless LAN. We're going to come to the right one more time. And then right here at the bottom, you will see Access Code. This is the information that you will enter into the Panda Touch. Now that we have the Access Code entered, again, I will hit Confirm. And now you can see this has popped up and it says Successfully Connected to Printer 2. Now, one thing I'll note is under he here under name, you can see it, it pulls these from the printer itself. I can change that, and I'm going to just delete all that because when I think of these printers, I don't think of them by the, all those long numbers. That one is the A1. This one is not whatever. That is, and this is also how they show up in Bamboo uh, Studio or in the Slicer. So I'm going to call that one P1S and OK, confirm. And now I've got A1 and P1S right there. And again, there is all this other information uh, down here that you can have access to. We also have uh, a bunch of information on this screen. Whoops, don't want to do that. Uh, information on the network as well. You are able to browse the root directory of the files if the firmware supports that. We have some settings um, and then again we have the home screen. Now another thing to note, again you can see this one is set to master, this one is set to sync. Now I can change this, I can make that a slave and what that would do is um, now whatever gets set to print here will also print on the slave printer but Everything has got to be the same, or it's going to, all the slicing settings are going to go the same. It's assuming that you have the same filament, the same nozzle type, all that kind of stuff. So you have to be careful with that. I will probably run this one in sync, which means that it's pretty much more of an independent printer. It gives me the option if I want to start a print from one and, and sync it to the other one, but it's not going to automatically do that. Now, a few other things to note is that the data that you see is always going to be pulled from the master. So if I want to look at the P1S, what I need to do is change this one to master. And I will get this warning or question, only one printer can be set as the master. Do you want to set this printer as the master and set the other master printer to sync? If I hit confirm, you can see they have now swapped. Now, if I were to look at the files, which I don't even have in that printer right now, it's going to have that. All of these settings are now um, for the P1S, and then on this uh, screen as well, you know, if I wanted to turn on or off the light uh, for the P1S now, I have those controls there as well. Now, let's get this installed. You can see everything that we have here in the kit. So we have the back plate, and then we have the mounting bracket here. Uh, we won't need that just yet. We'll use that when we get over to the printer. We've got our two little screws in this, um, I think it's a, maybe a little bag. There we go. So we are going to free this here. A cute little pouch. We've got our screws right there. I'm not sure why they give us four. Uh, I guess maybe for different, well, should only take uh, the two screws here. So let's get this going. I just checked the manual and it shows here that there are two screws, so the other two are just extras, I guess, which is always a uh, nice feature to have. So quite simply, we are just going to run those screws right through the bracket or the back plate into the metal base and then we'll go attach it to the printer. So here we have the back plate view. And as you can see, this is designed to fit right in here. So we're just going to uh, flip that around. And then 
insert our screws here. And once we get those properly lined up, it should pop right in there. And I always love it when they give you a uh, ball Allen wrench. That is much easier to use than some of the other ones because you get to use various angles when you're doing that. So we'll get this guy in there and now we can take this over to the printer and attach it. And now we'll install the mounting plate onto the P1S. A couple things you want to be careful of. You do have your SD card right here and then obviously you have the lid for the glass top. So this is simply going to, you can see these little tabs here, are going to slide behind the main screen. We're going to get that roughly positioned where we want it. And then I think that looks pretty good. And it's not rocket science. So we have the 3M tape on the back. I'm simply going to remove that. And then again, Carefully position this so that it's roughly centered and then we will press that down, let that hold for a second, and now we are going to run the cables. Now in order to install the USB cable, I recommend taking the USB-C portion and passing it up through this hole. The other end of the cable is too large to fit through that hole. Right over on the other side here, where we have our display, you will see there is a USB jack. It says output 5 volts, 1.5 amps. You're going to want to, with this cable, you can see the little USB icon. It will fit in right here, and that icon should be facing out toward you. And when you Get this lined up, that will plug it in right there. And then this cable will go into the USB-C jack, just like this. Now, it's a little hard to see, but down underneath here, there are some mounting clips that you can pop the cable into. And you probably wanna pull some of this out of the way and then tidy all of your cabling up here so that it doesn't end up snagging or causing any kind of an issue like that. Now that we have everything connected, again, we want to put this over to DC 5 volts. And then we'll pop that on and it will power up and come to life. And it'll take a minute here. It has connected to Wi-Fi and you can see that it is connected to the P1S. My A1 is not currently on, so it will fail to connect to that printer. If I come down here to my settings, I make sure that the P1S is set to master, and that should allow me to see all of the set or all of the parameters. You can see uh, these mirror what I have set down here. So also have the ability to see the files that are located on the root directory. Uh, as always, there's my warning that it cannot connect to the A1 because that parameter is not on. So why don't we send a uh, print over to this and we'll just see what uh, we see here on the screen. And there you can see we are downloading a file. This was sent from the uh, Bamboo Studio slicing program via the cloud. So as the uh, printer got the job, you can see the Panda Touch has come to life and it's showing the name and uh, this is one of the things that I really enjoy about the Panda Touch is being able to see what's actually happening. Um, again, you can see that on the other printers that have the uh, bigger screen like the A1 or the X1 Carbon, uh, but the P1P, P1S don't have that ability due to the smaller screen. So now you can kind of see what the uh, status is of what's going on there. One of the really cool things that you can do with the Panda Touch is you can actually start your prints from the device here. So just another way of doing this. So if I go to the folder icon, I can see um, a file that I have put in the root directory of the 
SD card that's in the machine. Now there are a few caveats. It has to be a 3MF file and it must have been sliced for plate one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And you can see here, my P1S is set to master. I'm not gonna mess with the uh, A1 obviously, um, but if I wanted to print over there too, I could just check that and then you can see printers in sync and it would send this job to both printers at one time. So that feature is great if you're running a print farm. Now, probably best if they were all the same because again, you wanna make sure that you have the same um, slicer settings, uh, nozzle, you know, all that kind of stuff that you would normally set. But once you had that dialed in, I could just set something that was loaded on this one printer. So instead of having to go printer to printer to printer and you know, maybe load four or five SD cards, um, and then start those jobs individually. All I have to do is the one, and then I can have that um, replicate over to all the other ones. So you still have your options that you can set here, like bed leveling, time lapse using the AMS, and I'm gonna hit print, and it says before starting the print, please take note of the following, ensure that the file was sliced for the selected printers, ensure the filament select settings in the sliced file match the filament loaded in the AMS slots. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit print, and we will see what happens. And I can hear the printer. It is uh, going through its initial setup process now. So that is uh, pretty cool. Now, can I do that for my phone? Um, we'll investigate that. Um, could I do that from the uh, you know, uh, computer? Obviously, but uh, this is just another way. Now, this is really neat because Whereas on the A1 with the touchscreen, I would get this kind of information here. Um, but on the P1S with its uh, smaller screen, uh, right now I'm looking at it and it's just showing me, you know, not a whole ton of information. It, uh, it just says, you know, it gives me the kind of the status and it tells me what file it's printing, but it doesn't tell me what it is actually doing. Whereas now I can see that the heat bed is uh, preheating and et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of cool. And now that uh, the print has started, it is changed uh, over to this icon here of the printer itself. And then of course I have the uh, information at the bottom. So I've got about 13 minutes left on the, on the print there. So. Those are the bits of information that you can get when you start a print. Now, if I had both printers going, I believe it would show me uh, the status of both of them. You also have the ability to look if you swipe down, if you have any kind of notifications. If it's not a critical notification, it'll put it here. If it is a critical notification, it will uh, flash a pop-up on the screen. Now, here's a quick example of the Panda Touch showing the status of two printers that are both printing at the same time. So these are actually uh, both printing files from their respective SD cards. Those were started uh, at the printer, but as you can see here, the Panda Touch is monitoring both the jobs. So I could take this with me and just see how things were going and not tie up my phone or anything like that or don't have to be sitting at the computer to know when these jobs finish and I can go start another one. One of the things that I like about the Panda Touch the absolute most is the ability to control the AMS or to set filament types via the Panda Touch. The P1S does not have any method whatsoever to input information, change your filament types. You know, if you change a spool, you basically have to go over to the computer or pull out your uh, phone and launch the Handy app. Uh, to make any kind of a modification. But as you can see here, now I'm about to remove this orange PLA and put in some PETG. Now, my PLA here, the little ion icon tells me that that is Bamboo Labs. It's got the RFID tag on it, so it has been auto-detected. So if I pull this up, it's gonna tell me all of the information here, um, including the serial number on the RFID tab. So I can't actually change it, but what I can do is I can select that one and then uh, actually it's not even loaded so if it were loaded I could hit unload um, but it's going to be as simple as just unloading it and putting a new one so let's do that real quick so we can just come over here 
I'm sure you guys know, we're just gonna push this forward. We're gonna pull this out. We're gonna pull out this spool. It's almost done, so I'm not overly worried with it doing too much unraveling, and we'll grab a new spool. Now, as you can see here, since we've changed uh, slot three, it doesn't know what it is. So I can hit that little icon. I can tell it, I'm just gonna call it bamboo even though it's Overture, because it doesn't have the uh, PETG, so I'm gonna call it Overture, PETG Basic, and then I can change my color. There's an orange, and notice we actually have more color options than you would on either the uh, Handy app, the A1 screen. Uh, the only place you're gonna find more colors is actually in the uh, Bamboo Slicer, where you can choose from any kind of palette. I hit Confirm, and now I have Orange PET Basic loaded right from the machine. Another nice feature of the Panda Touch is the ability to read from a USB drive. Maybe you don't feel like taking out the little tiny SD card from this printer. Maybe it's just more convenient for you to use a USB drive. Well, you have a standard USB port here on the side of the unit, so we can insert that. And now, if we go to Files, we can see USB flash drive. And then we have whatever is loaded. Now it's also, it looks like, um, needs to be in the root directory of the flash drive, but I can select that file right off of here. And then I can send this to my printer. If I had my other printers on, I could run um, all of these from this one unit and monitor it, et cetera. So just another option that you have here with the Panda Touch. Well, there you have it. Some of the things that I really like about this unit, uh, we've covered those, but uh, let me go into the pros and cons or the pluses and minuses. Um, so some of the positives, uh, it's got a, a really uh, nice size screen. So definitely a lot better than what you originally get on the P1S. Uh, one of the features that I kind of briefly talked about but uh, we didn't see is the error messages. So. Um, I've had situations where I'm printing and, you know, the, the AMS doesn't load properly or something like that, and the uh, original display on the P1S doesn't give you a whole lot of information, uh, but here on the, uh, Bam or on the Panda Touch, you get a big, you know, a big notification window. So that, that is really great. Um, that ability to just go in and actually... Um, you know, adjust your filament right there on the machine. I think that is, that's a top notch. That's almost a reason in, its, in and of itself uh, to purchase this unit. Um, having multiple, the, the status of multiple machines on the one screen. So again, you can take this with you uh, if you're in another room working and monitoring your prints, uh, that's great. Or even if you just have the one printer, it's kind of nice to have this without having to pull out your phone all the time. Um, the price at $59, uh, I think this is, is a steal. All the features and functionality that you get um, at such a low price, uh, can't really uh, beat that. I will put the uh, link to um, the unit as of today, which is uh, late February. It is currently, it says back available for pre-order, so I think they make them and they sell out um, both on their website and uh, places like AliExpress. Some of the um, the detractors or negatives uh, to the unit. Occasionally it will lose um, connection to the Wi-Fi, but I have noticed that uh, usually if I just hit restart here, um, you can see it, it doesn't take long to restart at all, just a couple of seconds, and it'll usually uh, connect right back up to the Wi-Fi. Now, I don't know if that's this unit, I don't or the firmware, or if it's just the way that my uh, Wi-Fi router uh, system works here. Um, one thing that I think could be improved, it would be nice, you know, most of we're, we're pretty used to uh, having some kind of feedback on our cell telephones or, you know, any kind of a screen display uh, these days. So whether that be a haptic feedback so you can feel a click or if there was a little, you know, I mean, obviously they're not going to be able to change the hardware. Uh, this isn't anything that, that they're going to be able to fix on this unit. But uh, it would have been nice to have a little bit of feedback, so either, you know, a little sound 
click or a buzzer or anything like that. That would have been nice. Sometimes you you don't notice if you've if you've hit something. Um, there is a little bit of a of lag on there, but again, this is a fifty nine dollar complete piece of hardware, so obviously they're not going to be running the you know the fastest uh, processors and things like that in there. Um, there's the issue of, is it future-proof? We don't know exactly what Bamboo will do uh, to the way that this communicates with the printers, and so only Bamboo controls that. So obviously, uh, uh, Big Tree Tech is gonna do whatever they can to keep the functionality on this. If you go to their website, on the buy page, it even says, it's check the, the latest firmware to make sure that it's still compatible. Um, one other item, again, this may be something that they could uh, do in uh, firmware, but um, you will you, right now you don't see any kind of preview as far as like 3MF files. On the A1, it will show you, it kind of depends on how it's sliced um, as to whether or not it'll show you a preview, but I've never seen a preview on, on this. Now I am running uh, the current uh, release version of the firmware. It's the shipping version 1.0.1. So uh, as things progress, hopefully they'll be able to add uh, some features. You know, one item I wanted to address about uh, this, because I see this quite often as I look in the uh, message boards and people talking about uh, this unit, they're like, why would I want to spend money on something like this? I can, I've got an old phone, I got old tablets, I can just use those. Well, you know, if you have that stuff laying around, more power to you, go ahead and uh, use them. Um, I'm sure it's gonna, it's gonna work great for you. I don't know, I haven't, I just haven't tried it. I don't know if I have uh, the Handy app installed on two different mobile devices. If I'm going to have problems, you know, if this one's connected, can I still uh, be, you know, out and about and uh, connect a second one to my phone? So maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But um, I'd say the biggest detractor to that is the fact that uh, these phones, especially as they age, the batteries uh, are not that great. And so when you are constantly charging them, you may end up with something like this. This is my Galaxy Note 8 several years old obviously and just the other day I took it out and it was fine I put it on the charger and this is what it looks like now uh, so that battery has started swelling it cost me you know it's not too much uh, to replace this $18 I get a new battery but it's probably gonna take me an hour or so to tear this down replace the battery um, so again $59 for an all-in-one that's always gonna be there and it's gonna be working just fine I don't have to worry about things like that so um, all right, let's wrap this up. So, overall, what do I think? Um, would I buy this personally? Yeah, absolutely. For $59, I think it's definitely a buy. I'd give it two thumbs up, and I haven't really decided on a review system per se yet, but I would say if I were to uh, rate this, I would give it uh, 4.5 out of 5 uh, directed tech gears. So, there you go. That is my uh, all-inclusive, maybe too long for some people, but I wanted to be thorough review on the uh, Panda Touch from Big Tree Tech. So, you know, get yours. As always, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, hit the bell so that you can get notified when I uh, release new videos. Um, and if you would, if there's a company you'd like me to reach out to and, and uh, try out some of their products or somebody that you think I should be involved with, you know, drop a link uh, or drop a uh, comment down below because I'd be very interested to, to know what you think. So let's just uh, keep on learning together and I'll see you next time.